if you want to feel better about your health and you want to feel like a really in shape, healthy person, even if you're not, go on a cruise ship for a week. <laughs> a lot of drinkers and eaters on those ships. It'll drink and eat you into feeling great. I, wow. I had never been on a cruise ship, ever. And Louis Black booked a comedy cruise and made me go. And I got to Miami, I'd never even seen a cruise ship up close. They're humongous. It holds 4,000 people. It's gigantic. My sister goes, what was it like? Maybe me and Matt will go. I go, here's what it was like. Picture if we were all in Las Vegas, standing in the Bellagio, and all of a sudden, it just sailed away. The whole building, and nobody panicked or acted weird. <laughs> I say, uh, bye. <laughs> hey, want to try a monkey ass rum punch? Yes, I love monkey ass rum punch. <laughs> Seven monkey rum punches later, you hear, and now we will be doing the safety drill. What? What? I'm hammered. I can't do a safety drill. It is on your musker station, which is located on the back of your key card. It will not match your deck or room, so please pay. What, 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 what? Now there's math involved? This is a terrible vacation. There's no math on vacation. <laughs> I finally found my room, and I was next to these lovely people from Wisconsin, and they had balloons all over their door. And uh, I was like, oh, hey, is it somebody's birthday or anniversary? And the guy goes, no. We just get so hammered on these ship and these rooms all look alike. So we decorate our door. <laughs> and the good news for you, sweetheart, is every time you find this door, you got a 50-50 chance of finding your room. <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Milwaukee. You are my new best friend. Don't tell me alcoholics are lazy. Look at that energy. He had to get tape, balloons. He had to stop smoking for four seconds to blow him up. <laughs> there's a lot of activities. Oh, yeah. You get on the ship, and there's this giant neon board. It looks like a Vegas sports betting board. You're like, oh, it's still overwhelming. You're like, oh. That looks fun, that looks fun. Well, if you're a sleeper inner or, or a drinker later, you will not be involved in any of these activities <laughs> because these will require you to be up at 6 a.m. with a fanny pack on, ready to jump in some dinghy with your new friends from Buffalo. And uh, no, because my friend Shay wanted to do it all. I'm like, no, I am not getting up at 6 a.m. to go to Stingray Village. I, I, I don't have it in me. I, if someone puts the stingrays in my bathtub, I will pet them, but I am not, I, I'm not doing that. I don't care enough. Her and her husband, Mike, they did every activity. You sure? And she checked back in. You sure I can't believe? Tomorrow we're gonna zip line through the Mexican jungle. Yeah, I'm sure. There is nothing I can think of that would make me projectile vomit more quickly. <laughs> than to be hot and hung over and shot through a Mexican jungle on a rubber band. No, no, I'm good. I am good right here on this chair with my monkey ass rum punch. And you know what? You call me crazy, Shay, but I question the safety of that apparatus. I truly do. Oh, no, 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 they make you sign a form. Really, what form? Who, who, who made those up? Juan and Julio in the van that won't be there when you come back with your flesh-eating bacteria wound that there's no hospital around. Hope you have a good time with the ship, doctor, getting your bacteria eating leg fixed up. If you're a drinker or a sleeper inner, your activity adventure will consist of getting off that ship at about noon into some sad little Mexican town where you're gonna hear a guy in an alley go, Psst. <laughs> and you don't know why, but you're gonna go over that guy. Cause you wanna hear what he has to offer. And <laughs> you're gonna go over there and he's gonna show you a clipboard with pictures of pretty fish. And he's gonna tell you he can take you the snorkel in there for $20. And you're gonna say 10. You don't know why he even said that. And then he's gonna say 15, 
and the next thing you know, you're gonna be on a rickety ass Partridge family bus going to Christ knows where. <laughs> because that's when Lou got the maddest he's ever been at me because we were the only two that agreed to this adventure. <laughs> he was like, this is stupid. This is the stupidest thing you've ever taught me into. We don't know who the fuck that man is. We don't know where this bus is really going. I said, I know, Lou. That's why this is a real adventure. <laughs> Those people on that Royal Caribbean ship know exactly what time they're coming back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we may never come back tonight, Lou. Do you understand the level of excitement I have provided for $15 a man? Come on. The worst thing about a cruise ship, though, is they have a TV channel on your uh, a little boat channel. And in the afternoons, when I first turned it on, it's a picture of where you are in the ocean because there's cameras on the outside of the boat. And you go, oh, isn't that lovely? And it's just the sea and nice spa music. But in the morning, no. When you turn that channel on, it's not the lovely ocean with spa music. It's a picture of your bill from the day before. <laughs> right. Oh, how mean is that? What kind of buzzkill is that? This is vacation. I don't need to review my bad behavior on a daily basis. What kind of sadist is running this ship? That is horrible. That, all that can wait till sad Sunday when it's checkout time. <laughs> and I see the bill and I go, oh my God. And then I become alarmed and I have that conversation that I seem to have with myself about once a year when I see it on paper and go, holy Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think you're an alcoholic. <laughs> hey, hey, shh, 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 Hey, it was vacation. <laughs> ah, you bought drinks for those nice people from Buffalo. The drinks were overpriced. I think you need to take that alcoholic test online. <gasps> Don't you dare. Don't you dare. It's all true or false. You've never done well on Drew and Lux. You always guess wrong. They don't let you explain anything. The world is black and white to those people. The world is not a black and white place. The world has gray areas. Question number four example. Do you drink at home alone? True. However, I used to go out and drink with my friends at bars, and then they said I couldn't drink and drive. So, so now I stay home sometimes and drink and watch Shark Week. So, am I an alcoholic or am I just a really good citizen who loves America? I love America. And I'll tell you something, it's crazy because when you get on a cruise, they prepare you for, you know, an emergency drill in case the boat goes down. So when they do this on the boat, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, if this boat goes down, I'm not running to any of these queens because they're going to be screaming and crying like me. <laughs> Let me tell you what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to run to the two lesbians on the ship. <laughs> Because you know they've already built a lifeboat out of a Klondike bar and a fucking shoehorn. I'm gonna live! I remember the first time I went on one of these boats, they make all the, the bathrooms unisex. And I went to use the bathroom and came out of the stall, I was washing my hands. And a gay gentleman came out of the stall and he was just kind of staring at me. And I go, oh, I I'm sorry. And he goes, well, I didn't know there'd be so many women on this ship. I was like, well, there were three more, but we had to kill them, so <laughs> thank God. No more women. <laughs> Gay men can party all night. They can do drugs. Again, I don't do them, but I am curious about them. I was out one night, one of my gay friends was like, oh my God, tonight someone offered me poppers. <laughs> gay, and I said, uh, no one knows what that is except you guys. 
And I was like, poppers, what is that? He said, it's video head cleaner. I said, well, what's it do? He said, uh, it loosens up your asshole. And I was like, fuck. Why didn't someone tell me that years ago? Because... Go, oh, wow. This is the whole... This is the whole war. This is what we're doing. And we didn't even spend the money. Because they go, if you're going to take a shower here, in the shower building, you might want to wear your tennis shoes and extra socks. Because you'll notice, this is all Russian equipment. It's from the 70s. We didn't bring new stuff. The Russian stuff is still there. I'm like, did we learn nothing? Really? The Russians? The toughest people on Earth. People who tricked Hitler into a snowstorm were freaked out by these people. These people in the middle of the night went, holy crap, they're crazy, and ran home like girls and left everything. They left tanks, they left barracks, they left apartments. They're like, here's the keys, man. You want to give it a whirl? Seriously, we are sneaking out at midnight. This is insane. And they told us, if you're going to take a shower, wear your socks and shoes because we don't publicize this, but we've had quite a few cases of electrocution. And I was like, well, I'm out. I'm done showering. <laughs> you think I'm gonna trust my life to socks and a pair of Pumas I bought at Marshalls for $57? <laughs> These aren't even running shoes, you moron. They're just cute. They're accent shoes. I'm not gonna trust my life. It's horrible. I didn't shower for like, I don't know, 13, 14 days. I know, it's gross. It's even gross to admit but I'm admitting it. Then they drop you off in the D.C. airport, and you, it's, you're on your own to get yourself home. Fine. I need to go to St. Louis for Christmas. I go, I go to the airport bar at 6 a.m. I, I still haven't showered. There's nowhere to shower. Uh, I have glasses on, no makeup. My hair is in a baseball hat that they've given me that says USO. It's a free just hat. I go in the bar. There's one guy. He's about 70, and he's hammered. I thought, good for you, sir. I, I don't even know how this happens or why it happened, but it's 6 a.m. in D.C. and you're at the airport hammered. I don't even know what the story is. But I'm a fan. I like it. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of time. <laughs> hey, you want to go get drunk? Hey, let's have some fun. Let's go to the airport and not have to fly anywhere. That'll be stress-free and fun for once. So, I don't want to talk to him, though. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just, I'm tired, I'm crabby, I'm filthy. I just want to eat American breakfast and speak to no one and get on my plane. And I look down and I hear from the other end of the bar, <laughs> this is all I hear. <laughs> and I kept looking down and I thought, wow, that's the greatest pickup line <laughs> ever. You can't not look at that person. After that person just did that, now I don't know if you're a bear and I didn't look right, or are you a, are you a pirate? What is happening? You can't not. So I look up and he goes, ah. I see your hat, honey. It says USO. Are you, uh, are you with them? I said, I, I don't know what you mean with them, sir. I just, uh, I just went to uh, Afghanistan and did some shows for the troops. He goes, oh, oh, you did some shows, huh? What are you, <laughs> what are you, like a showgirl or a stripper? <laughs> <laughs> I was for like half a second and then I was like, I should marry this guy. Are you serious? I have head lice right now, sir. My, my hat's moving. My hat's moving on its own. And somehow you look through all this and you see showgirl stripper cleaner upper. You, you can see. Yeah, they, they sent me to Bosnia and Kosovo to entertain the troops, right? And that was, that was pretty interesting. Uh, we had this nice German man who drove our tour bus. Road Rage Rudy. Can't make that up. Road Rage Rudy. And every time a car 
tried to pass the bus, road rage Rudy would scream out angry German phrases. <laughs> so there I was, my little Jewish self, daydreaming about soldiers. <laughs> Car tries to pass the bus, and I hear, Du fast scheißen ein, Arschloch, Juden! <laughs> and I wake up and I'm like, Pack your bags, Anne Frank! <laughs> We got to get the fuck out of here! <laughs> oh, yeah. They sent me to Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Crazy shit there, too. We landed. They said, Sean, we want to take you to the prisons to show you where we keep the detainees. I thought to myself, woo. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Look at this face. I'm your ultimate hostage. I'm female. I'm American. I'm Jewish. Those terrorists would love to put a black bag over my head. Pull it off and be like, we did it! We got Barbara Streisand! Because <laughs> all Jews look alike. I would just be like, Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> People, <laughs> Mr. Zigfield, Mr. Zigfield, I'm a bagel on a plate of onion rolls. I'm a la, 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 sadie married lady. <laughs> no. That's funny. I, I think, you know, you two can break your nose four times and look like Barbara Streisand. <laughs> It's not hard, but I think in Los Angeles, everybody wants to see someone famous. Everyone's like, is that person famous? Is that, oh, is that person famous? And true story, again, I was at a stoplight and this car pulled up next to me and these people, they, they struggled to take a picture of me. And I thought to myself, why? Why? I think Streisand got in a time machine. <laughs> And now she's driving a white Prius? Fuck you. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs>